I'm not old. I'm not old. I'm not old. We're back into the hour-long episodes of The Twilight Zone, and this one is not the worst, but also not the best. Once again, we have another middling hour-long Twilight Zone fable, which contains both good and lame. I really dig the moral featured in this tale, but it has been done better by other stories, even from this very show. The incredible world of Horace Ford is a deconstruction of romanticizing the past. In this case, a middle-aged adult man wearing his nostalgia goggles too tight, to the point of blinding himself from improving his future. Naturally, this is a great idea and an important lesson to teach, but since we're now on season four and the writers are still pulling this trope, it's beginning to feel like old hat. But to be fair, let's check out the plotline. In this episode, we follow a middle-aged toy designer named Horace Ford, who's having a midlife crisis as his birthday approaches. Disappointed with how monotonous his fate has grown, Horace beckons for his current life to be like his idyllic childhood days of innocence, where he had fun, no problems, friends to party with, no responsibilities, and lived in a great neighborhood where the wonder of magic reigns supreme. Unfortunately, this has turned Horace into something of a man-child who refuses to grow up, can't act his age, and formed a rift between him and his loved ones and co-workers, since he can't accept this harsh rut. Horace is played decently enough by another Batman icon. Well, Wolfpack, if you've watched our horror reviews, you know we've seen Catwoman, the Penguin, and even the Riddler, but now our Twilight Zone protagonist is played by Commissioner Gordon himself, Pat Hingle. I'm in charge here, not Carl Grissom. Hingle definitely pours his heart and soul into this character, as Horace does emote more than the uptight suits we usually get, but I have mixed feelings on this character, since Ford can get really annoying at times, and his immaturity doesn't help. For most of the episode, it's about Commissioner Gordon Gordon growing up and having to learn the harsh lessons from that Twilight Zone magic. Horace Ford is wrapped up in his old ways and can't look forward, chasing a bygone era. Gordon constantly complains about how much life sucks, acts like a juvenile doofus, and worries everyone around him, since he has too much attachment to his childhood memories. But one day, upon wishing he could go back to his days of youth, he crosses over over a time portal in his old neighborhood, taking him back to his past, where he relives his precious childhood memories, and even sees former friends and neighbors who haven't aged a day. Yep, it's another time travel Twilight Zone tale, but one that fits a more psychological mold, as Horace is the sole person who sees this wonderland, while everybody around him proclaims that his old hood is no more and has gone downhill over the years. Ford frequently spots and tries to follow past kid versions of his former besties, but every time he gets close, they vanish, and he returns to the present day. Commissioner Gordon tries to convince his loved ones that they can go back to the past, where they'll be much happier, but his mom and wife worry he's losing his grasp on sanity, as he grows a bit too obsessed chasing his past. To make things creepier, one of the ghost children who Horace keeps bumping into sends messages to his wife, warning her of her husband's quarrel. These are all pretty engaging ideas, and you do wonder where this is all going, but I'm sad to report that this episode's hugest problem is that it is so slow and dull that it drags the pacing down something fierce. I know I sound like a broken record at this point, but this is a problem with half of these hour-long Twilight Zone tales. This feels like it was supposed to be a 30-minute runtime, which got forcibly stretched into an hour. But the show clearly didn't have enough content to justify the long length. The plot structure is so straightforward, simple, and easy to get, but the long stretches of boredom totally weaken the good intentions behind it. 
This episode's glaring issue is that it gets too boring thanks to the pointless extra runtime, and we get so much repetition that the scenes feel like they keep making the same point. Horace cries about how growing up sucks, he time travels to his old hood, where he gets closer and closer to uncovering a secret backstory, only to get sent back to the present day, where he tries to tell everyone about his trips, only for them to not believe him and worry he's on well. Rinse and repeat. It's like that for a whole hour until the end. Insanity is doing the exact same fucking thing over and over again. While I do cherish this theme of how we shouldn't glorify the past and that Commissioner Gordon can't let it go, when you don't have enough story to keep it interesting, it just puts you to sleep. And they could have done more to spice things up. I do like some of the trips to the past, since the neighborhood has this misleading atmosphere, implying that there's more to this world than what Commissioner Gordon sees. But his returning jumps back to modern day result in the same sequence of events where he refuses to grow up and his family fear he's losing it. However, there are some genuinely clever clues sprinkled all throughout the episode, foreshadowing the big twist. How Gordon's past is not so perfect. His mom warns Horace to leave the neighborhood alone since it was a terrible area. All the characters refuse to follow Gordon there because they openly proclaim it's been closed off for years. It looks uncanny, and the ghost kid of Ford's old school chum keeps popping up for warning of danger to come. Eventually, we get our big reveal. Commissioner Gordon returns to his old hood one last time to finish his flashback, where it turns out that his past was awful. The ghost kids had a private conversation behind Ford's back, where they exposed their true colors as idiot bullies, who hated kid Horace. And when adult Horace magically regresses into a kid, kid again, they beat him up and hate on him for not inviting them to his birthday party and leave him for dead in a dark alley. Horace's wife gets another message from the ghost kid, this time showing her her husband's broken watch, warning that he's hurt, where she goes back to the old stomping grounds. As we see a pretty shocking visual that the cynical adults were right. The neighborhood is actually this shithole ghetto left in ruins and so so dirty and empty that even homeless people don't live there out of fear of getting killed. Horace had been imagining all his childhood wonders all along to cope with the fact that his childhood was awful. My childhood stunk! It's easily the best moment of the whole episode as the lovely town is revealed to be this gross looking empty dump before Mrs. Ford finds her kid commissioner beaten where he finally grows up up into an adult, confessing the truth, that he had been deluding himself with fake memories and acted immature this whole time because he never had a happy childhood. We remember what was good and we black out what was bad. Had a rough childhood. <laughs> The episode concludes on a bittersweet note, where Commissioner Gordon accepts his past was bleak and he learned the hard way to move on. But he finally embraces his adulthood as a brighter tomorrow, as he and his wife leave the past behind to celebrate his happy birthday. Where the ghost kid winks to the audience, implying that this was real magic giving Commissioner Gordon the tough love he desperately needed. The ending is a magnificent scene, which saves this fable thanks to some powerful imagery, heavy emotional drama, harsh morals that don't hold back, and having a light at the end of the dark tunnel to at least warn you that growing up is not the soul-crushing fear we usually have. But man, do I wish the rest of the episode was as great as its final act, because this was so dreary that I struggled to get through most of it. This could have been among the greatest episodes of the series, and it has a ton of that Twilight Zone mojo, but it simply needs to be trimmed down, and should not have gone on longer than it should have. The lesson about how we need to mature and stop glorifying the past, because it's not always the way we remember, are deep ties 
topics, but they've been touched upon before in better ways and require more energy in the storytelling. We've now seen this theme tackled by Walking Distance, The Trouble with Templeton, The 16mm Shrine, A Stop at Willoughby, Death's Head Revisited, Young Man's Fancy, and heck, even the last episode before this one of Late I Think of Cliffordville. So the fact that this tale had too much slow burn did not help it outrace half of those. This is not a favorite of mine, and I believe the reason why most fans don't see it as a high-tier episode is because it's boring, it's dull, it saves all the good stuff for last while dragging things on to fulfill that runtime, and the story just isn't as fun to watch the more we get repeats. Of course, there are still good ideas even in the lesser fables. The moral behind this arc is good and is executed perfectly in the finale. Horace does undergo much-needed character development. The ghost moments do add some eeriness to what's going on. The imagery is so glorious, and the ending on how growing up isn't a bad thing is very much needed in today's world. So this is clearly a valuable treasure to some. But like I said, it does require some fixes, since it's far from being the top dog of the nostalgia addiction arc. So I grant this episode a silver skull. This episode's fine and serviceably insightful, but I wouldn't recommend immediately running out to visit it like Commissioner Gordon would. Another middling entry for the hour-long specials. The Incredible World of Horace Ford is a decent Twilight Zone tale with some sparkles here and there, but much like our main character, it's not as ideal upon closer inspection. Time has passed to be sure, but it's the special time in the special place known as the Twilight Zone. The Twilight Zone.